Strategic Thinkers Network Africa, a policy think tank, has filed a suit at the Accra High Court to have the transaction involving the sale of off-spec fuel by the bulk oil storage and transportation company limited bost to moving Pena energy and others rendered null and void. Cited in the suit are the National Petroleum Authority, NPA, BOST, Managing Director of BOST, Alfred Obing, Boating, Moving Pena Energy, Zupoil, and Mark West as first, second, third, fourth, fifth, and sixth defendants. That's very technical, I know. But we have the man in the studio. His name is Ni Tete Tete. He's Executive Director of Strategic Thinkers Network. He joins me. Now, what are the reliefs you're seeking apart from asking that it be declared null and void? Well, we are actually asking that uh, the fact that uh, one ACMA uh, told BOSS that moving PINA was registered only for it not to be registered and at that time they had sold the contaminated fuel to that company, it means that there's actually a violation of Section 16.2c of the Public Procurement Act. Now, we also know that under normal circumstances, the sale of the contaminated fuel has to go through some bidding process, but it was actually so sourced which also means that there's also a violation of Section 35 and 41, um, 41 of the Public Procurement Act. Now, we also know that clearly um, Zoop Oil and Mark West would have to actually have licenses to do business with BOST, but actually they do not have the license, which is also means that there's also a contravention of Section 11 of the National Petroleum Authority Act. And so it is per these violations, that is why we deem it fit to pull all those parties uh, to court because um, um, we believe that the court is actually independent, independent enough to give a fair ruling to make this matter get to a logical conclusion because we at Stranek are actually not satisfied with the BNI report as we have always said, as governments you cannot investigate yourself and so if you have actually taxed BNI to to, to, to give a report on this boss scandal, then it becomes injurious. And that is why clearly you would see that industry experts, civil society organizations, and even political parties are saying that they do not believe the BNI report and that the BNI report mm. is pregnant with a little Before we go reports. into the BNI report and whether or not your think tank believes in it, let's look at it. First of all, you say it was so sourced. The minister explains that it was not so sourced. Actually, it went into some kind of a. Uh, um, bidding so that uh, there was a company that was willing to pay less and it was moving Pena that decided or that opted to pay uh, one city 30 pesos. So it could not be that it was so sourced. Have you checked with that? The point was that when the minister said that the boss managing director said something different. So then, then there's some contradiction. But who is on the seat? That is the managing director of BOST. The minister of energy is not the boss MD and so if you, if we but want he to, has if, oversight yeah he has oversight but he does not he is not on the ground and the one who is on the ground is the managing director of boss and so if you would want to listen to someone you have to listen to the boss the managing director and not the minister of energy and that is why per this contradiction and the back and forth is the reason why we've gone to court and asking that these whole things to be put to arrest unregistered you said the company w was on was unregistered but then the minister, of course, goes on to say, and these are, and I keep referring to the minister because they met, they met, just uh, not just the minister, but the minister, BOST, national security, all of those people who were supposed to investigate this matter, put together that statement which they put out there. So you cannot rubbish it, you cannot uh, 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 push it under the carpet. In that case, when they say la selling fuel to unlicensed companies is a convention. It might not be necessarily lawful, but it's a convention, and you can work with the convention. So what they say is that there's there 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 is a ban, you know, on selling, henceforth on selling fuel to people who uh, companies or whatever organizations that are unregistered. But it does not; they do not make they do not imply that this was a wrong move because it is convention. Well, I, I beg to differ because the Minister of Energy is not an authority. Uh, the authority. Is an MP Act. The MP Act clearly states that um, I cannot find um, state the section, but it states that before you have do business mm. with BOS, you would have to be registered. And we mm. and the point was that as one G a CMA told BOS that Moving Pina was registered, and so Moving Pina decided to do business with them, only to realize that it was not registered. Now we are seeing that Section 16.2C of Public Procurement Act says that if you are doing business with a company that is not 
registered, it is illegal. Now, mm. and also for the fact that the GE uh, CMA said that Mupina was registered when it was not registered, it is fraudulent, and that is why we are we are we are calling the courts to actually set the whole transaction aside okay. because on grounds of illegality and fraud. And so we are leaving to the to the court. We because we believe that the court is independent enough, and we are sure and optimistic that whatever the court will say, Ghanaians would actually believe it as compared to the fact that the minister is giving that report. Because we are saying that as government, you cannot investigate yourself. If mm. there has been allegations or alle allega allegations of corruption or conflict of interest and what have you, the best you can do is to find an independent body to look into the matter. Mm. That in, in that way, you will realize that Ghanaians will sympathize with you. But when you as government, there are some allegations and you want to now tell us, you as part of government, you are also investigating yourself. That is mm. not true. How are you going to expect industry experts, civil society organizations, and political parties to even side with you? That is why we decided to go to court. So when are you going to court? When is this no, we matter already being filed. Heard? You we, found yeah, it. we are hoping that the the parties that we are we are we are calling on would uh, file for appearance, and then we will know the way forward. And on then that. you take it forward. Yes. What what would disappoint you in this case? Well, we don't have any point of disappointment, but we just want to make sure that this matter is put to a rest, or we get to the logical conclusion so far as this boss can is concerned, because it's eating the country up and it has reached international news and has put Ghana in a very bad light, and so. BN has brought that BN has brought their reports. That's okay, but we believe that is we need an independent you body. You doubt the BNI's report because, as we keep on saying, as government, you cannot investigate yourself because, as BNI, any government that comes to power would appoint the bosses or the executives of BNI, and so now you are tasking the BNI to investigate you. Probably, definitely, you would definitely see industry experts, civil society organizations, political parties questioning the report. But if it was okay. the court. That came out and said that indeed the managing director of boss was has been exonerated. You will not actually see the back and forth in the debate and argument, and that's why we have decided to go to court. To go to we are court. optimistic that the court would be fair and bring out the, the fair judgment that will be beneficial to the country. I believe so. The court is always <laughs> fair, isn't it? Yes. All right. So strategic thinkers network is that a new one? No, it has not been new. This is my second time being here. We oh, have been here I see. before. Yes. Okay. All right. We wish you all the best with that court case. Ni Tete Tete. Ni, don't you have a first name like a, that's Ni? Yeah, Ni. Ni, ni okay. Tete Tete. So Ni Tete Tete. He's executive director of Strategic Thinkers Network. It's a policy think tank. And of course, they're already in court over BOST. Interesting times ahead, it appears. Thank you very much for passing Thank through. you very much. Thank you. All right. Away from that, members of parliament have mounted a defense for the practice where agencies sponsoring bills support their work, insisting that there is nothing wrong with it. There has been controversies over the handing out of an over 100,000 cities to members of the previous Parliament Finance Committee by the National Lotteries Authority to push through a bill. The MPs are concerned there is a huge public backlash against them over the issue and are asking the Speaker, Professor Michael Quay, to defend them. Listen to North Tong MP Samuel Okujetua Blakwa and Efutu MP Alexander Afenyo Marking speak on the floor. We are all aware that members of the judiciary, in particular judges, receive training from other institutions, civil society. We've never heard that because the U.S. government is supporting judges for training programs and all that, or that judges attended a workshop and they were facilitated through accommodation and, say, per diem allowances, justice is being compromised. We never hear that. It has never been the argument. But today, Mr. Speaker, you being the primus in Paris, we are inviting Mr. Speaker to take this matter very seriously and protect us because the impression is being created as though members of parliament have been compromised and that we are departing from our court duty. That is not the case. Mr. Speaker, if GTZ invite us for a workshop and they facilitate the workshop. Mr. Speaker, it cannot be that the fact that the workshop was facilitated by them, members have been compromised in one way or the other. And again, if an institution of state is sponsoring a bill and decides to take members outside this house 
for further stakeholder briefing to enable us to understand, and they want to do so at their instance. Same cannot amount to this house being compromised. We are of the view, I am of the view, I'm sorry, Mr. Speaker, I am of the view that if this house takes this matter up seriously to explain to the public the nature of our work and the dynamics, uh, the public would understand and may not thereby be misled into thinking that something on towards is being done. I invite this house to join this view so that the right things are done. And he did raise this issue and said that there was a need for the house to take action because if MDAs facilitate the work of committees, then it will appear that they are calling the tune and uh, he who pays the piper calls the tune. Right on our speaker, to the extent that these discussions continue, many civil society organizations have waded in. I want to appeal most humbly, if uh, you can give some guidance as to what can be done on the way forward so that we can regulate this. Is it legal or not? Uh, is, it, uh, 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 is it acceptable? And if it is, what should be the guidelines so that, because now members of parliament are walking around and there's a lot of suspicion and it's as though some have even said that lawmaking is for sale and all of that and that if you don't pay committees your uh, bill or whatever business you have before the house will not be attended to and i believe that to the extent that this debate rages on and uh, many people are commenting and uh, making some remarks that sometimes bother on the disparaging we may want to uh, take a critical look at it and see if we can develop some mechanisms moving forward that will, uh, as it were, protect the image and sanctity of Parliament. Finally, right on the speaker. Okuja Tuablakwa, the Majority Leader of Saiti, Mensa Bonsu, is proposing that work of committee members be restricted to the House so other agencies do not have to step in to support. We can hear him as well as the Minority Leader, Haruna Idrisu. I think this House should come to a determination on the way forward for us. Initially, the excuse of that we're not having enough committee rooms. So, the uh, bodies that we are to oversee would invite us to their premises. But given what is happening these days, perhaps the time has come for us as a house to take the decision that we will resort to the vehicle of the committee rooms that exist here in Parliament and not allow ourselves to be lured outside where these matters would every now and then crop up. I agree with my colleague when he says that elsewhere in the established democracies, members, may, individual members and the committees as a whole may be lobbied by corporate bodies to delve into the issues and speak on their behalf. It is not considered as any attempt to bribe the individuals or uh, the committees. And yet here, because of our own disposition and because of how we relate to these matters, people want to make political capital when they do happen. Individuals will want to extract vengeance in their own dealings with these matters, even where they belong to the same caucuses. And that is not good enough. And that's why I'm saying, that perhaps at the platform that we shall provide ourselves, we have to deal with this matter. My own thinking, my own considered opinion is that we should begin to investigate the possibility of restricting all committee meetings to the premises and indeed the presence of parliament. But we, can, we shall together have to make that determination. Now there is a very thin line between uh, facilitating the work of parliament and corrupting parliament and members of parliament in their eye. Uh, I know that this morning, Mr. Speaker, 
you requested that leadership engage it. So it's to, I know the majority leader will respond to it, is to assure members that we will take a definite position on this matter in a manner which protects what we do uh, as members of parliament. Mr. Speaker, we know your position on this matter is that parliament be adequately resourced to be on its own and not to be dependent and uh, be supported or facilitated by any agency in this way, which is now the subject which is impugning the integrity of members of parliament. So we will engage on that matter. And Speaker Professor Michael Quay assured them the leadership had, has taken note of the concerns and will work to deal with it. I trust that in a week we should have some directive, some common position upon which we shall act further on the matter. No one is sleeping over it at all. But all parameters of the issue must be seriously examined. We will collect the Honorable Minister for Tourism made a statement in the House. At the same time, there was a question uh, relating to that same matter. And the follow-up is something which honorable members may in future check from the table office. And that's one reason why we need our own committee on parliamentary assurances so that we can do appropriate follow-ups. I believe this will also be taken up when we come to revise the standing orders. Our appeal to all honorable members involved in the process to let us really hold the bull by the horn and complete that matter since it goes a long way to affect rather adversely the work of the House. On that, the business statement as presented is accordingly admitted.